So the thing gave him strength. So that's how Jeremy was able to defeat that monster with two heads. He cut off one of the heads of the monster and threw him to the earth and said, Go back to the earth. At the earth, he used just one head. Just showing us a typical slave market where the, the rich uh, European people they come there. Some buy the father, some buy the mother and the children. So that's how families were separated for life. Good day, everyone. Today's video is on the Revelation Palazzo Museum located in Benin City, Edo State, Nigeria. It was founded by Sir Professor Victor Owaifo of blessed memory and everything you are going to be seeing in this video today were orchestrated by him. He built the museum and organized all the stories you are going to be listening to in this video. So a lot of history from the Benin Kingdom is contained in this museum and we're going to be exploring all of it in this video. As usual, the history of any place is not complete without folklore and other stories that might be hard to believe. But you need to understand that these are folklore and it was passed down from generation to where we are today. So it is left for us to understand it and appreciate it as folklore, not castigate it. So the Benin Kingdom actually has a lot of documented history that will be dropping sequentially on this channel, so do well to stay tuned. Being a Nigerian and from Edo State myself, this particular video is of importance to me because it explains a lot of the Benin Empire, which is why I'm taking my time to share this to the world. This book here is a compendium of all you'll be seeing in this video. Also a lot of important documentaries about the Benin Kingdom, you know, you can see. So you can actually get it in the Palazzo Museum just for 5,000 naira. it's not that expensive. So that is where I got it from when I visited there. And thanks to the instructor too that took us around and explained everything contained in this museum to us. I really appreciate you, Ma. And as promised, when we were filming you, all the royalties that we got it from this video, a percentage will be sent back to the museum to at least help fix the lighting issues because we noticed that some of the lights were not working. And being a private owned museum, we can do our best to appreciate them for keeping such history in one place. So feel free to share your thoughts about this production after watching it and it's family friendly, so you can actually watch it with the children and everyone. Benin City, it's too big to be covered in a video. That's why I'm making a series on Benin City and a lot of videos will be dropping. We hope to go to other states and possibly around the world, but uh, we have a lot to do in Benin City. So a lot of Benin City videos will be dropping on this channel. Do well to join us and enjoy the video. We'll be moving over to the instructor now to carry on with explanation of all that is in the Palazzo Museum. Stay tuned. So coming from the gate, this is the actual Victor Waifu's house. But this is the museum over here. We will be entering now. So in the museum, you will see this aeroplane, actual aeroplane that was used. I think when he was tired of using the aeroplane, he came to drop it here. I'm just kidding. It's actually constructed in this place. So it's one of the artifacts you see in this museum, the Wifers Museum. So this is the office where you make inquiries on what happens inside here. The Lation Palazzo Museum. Everything you see here, the artwork, the sculptures, they were done by Sir Professor Victor Wifo himself before he passed on. So this sculpture you see here, this is the sculpture of the famous Princess Adesua. Princess Adesua was the daughter of the Ezomonu Zebu in the ancient Benin Kingdom. She was famous for her beauty and her beauty was known all over the kingdom. So there came a time when the ruler of the Ubuluku people in Delta State, that is Prince Ebohon, he came to Benin to pay homage to Adesua's father. Oh, 
this girl. So while he was there at the palace, the father now ordered Adesua to serve Kola North to the visitors. So you can see Kola North inside the bowl. So as she was passing the Kola North across, King Ebohon was captivated by her beauty. So he liked what he saw. He was just flirting with her. And at that young age, Adesua was already industrious. She was making beads and selling beads. And also, she was selling livestock then, during that period. So he bought some items for Auntie Jay. He bought some items from her and he promised he was going to pay when he gets back to his base, which is Ubuluku in Delta State. On getting there, you know then, they deal with market days. After several market days, he defaulted. He didn't send the money to her. So Adesua became worried. Then she sent her father's servants. They went all the way to Buluku Kingdom. He refused giving them the money. She sent her maids as well. Still, he didn't give them the money. So she now decided she was going to travel to Delta State to go and collect her money. Her parents, they warned her against it. Even the dad now said he was going to give her the money for the items that Ebohon bought. But she refused because she was very stubborn. She said she wanted her money. So after much advice and everything, all the advice fell on deaf ears. She now decided to travel with two of her mates. On getting to Buluku Kingdom, Ebohon now entertained her. He gave her a lot of gifts and all the pleasantries and everything. So she now said that was not the reason she's there, that she's there to collect the money for the items he bought. And you know, Adesua, she's very beautiful. And a lot of people were coming for her hand in marriage. That is people with larger kingdoms compared to that of Ebohon. And even the king, the Oba that was on the throne then, that was Oba Akengbuda. He too was interested in marrying Adesua and negotiations had begun for that marriage to take place. So after everything, she now told him that this is why she's here to collect her money. So he told her that he have twice to pay her that money, but what he wants is for her to be his wife. So being that Adesua, she's a very beautiful girl and she's also proud. She now felt insulted by that request. So she told him a lot of hurtful things. She told him that he was very ugly and his kingdom is small, that he's just like a slave compared to what her father has. Ebon felt humiliated and he was very angry with those hurtful words she said to him. So he was now angry and he just collected a machet from one of his servants and beheaded her. He cut off her head and Adesua died instantly. So one of the maids ran quickly to Bidu Kingdom to inform them of what had happened, that Adesua had been killed. So after much... Is it the same Adesua or Adesua them are killed? They just use it to honor her. Or is it the same Adesua? No, I don't know about that grammar school, but this story is about Adesua. So the father now went to the king and told him that Adesua has been killed by Ebonho. So Oba Akengbuda now sent his warriors to Buluku Kingdom and there was a war that broke out between them. After much fighting and everything, Ebonho was overpowered and the kingdom of Buluku was destroyed. And destroyed they, Buluku in State. Yes. So they cut off his head in retaliation for Adesua's death and his head was brought to Benin Kingdom. So because of that incident, we find that in Benin today, if there's a social gathering, they don't really, they don't allow women to serve cola nuts. So it was that incident that brought that, that brought about that. So there's a, there's a movie to that effect. Which movie is that? I can't remember. Is it Ebohon, the fall of Ebohon? So, uh, so it's a popular story. It was really, it was her beauty and her pride that led to her, her death. Thank you very much. Okay, this one now, we call it the lion and the maiden. What he's trying to illustrate with this is that the lion 
represents the Western countries, which we call the Oyibo people, the European nations. And the maiden that is leaning on the lion represents Africa. What he's trying to tell us again is that we are too dependent on the European nations. You see, even the handsets we are holding, the computers, the cars, most of those things, they produce it there and they bring it for us to buy. And when we want to import those things, we import them with high taxes, which is really draining our economy. Even as little as chocolate, we export our cocoa there. They use it to produce chocolate and bring it for us to also buy. So what he's trying to say is that with the youth, we should be innovative. We should think outside the box so that we can be liberated from these white people and be on our own, start producing our own things. You can see that the maiden, she's leaning on the lion. Up to today, we still depend on the European nations for a lot of things. You see Jaffa every day. Okay. <laughs> then this one, this is how the Benin, this is how they dress, the Benin people. There's another one, maybe there's a traditional or there's an occasion at the palace. You see those chiefs, they dress and they put the, they tie their wrapper, they bulge it towards the waistline. That's another way the Benin's dress. Then this one, the Asian people, they dress this way. There's another tribe in Ghana, we call them the Ashanti people. They also dress this way. So let's come in. Okay, this is the other one I'm talking about. You can see the wrapper is being bulged towards the waistline here. Mm -hmm. Then this one, this sculpture, this is Prince Odogbo. And he was the son of Oba Ehenguda. During the reign of Oba Ehenguda, he had two female children and just one male child. So there was this speculation going on all over the kingdom that he has no male child to succeed him when he passes on. So to put that rumor to rest, he now asked his son, Prince Odogbo, to walk naked all the way from Uselu to the palace. And something that was supposed to be a thing of ridicule, a thing of shame or, and something like that, it now became a thing of joy. And there was jubilation all over the kingdom that really the king has a son to succeed him. So it has always been in history that Prince Odogbo is the only prince that had ever walked naked in Benin kingdom. That's why we have it in the museum here. Then this one, this is Oba Esige the Great. So there is no way you talk about Benin history without talking about Oba Esige. During the time of Oba Esige, he brought a lot of civilization to the Benin kingdom. He had alliances with the Portuguese. There was a free trade between the Benins and the Portuguese. Like yes, the story is there. And to the extent that he can even speak the language. So there was a time a war broke out between the Benins and the people from Ida. That's Kogi State. Ko yes, that's Kogi State. So it was the Portuguese people that gave him musket guns that he used in fighting them off. Oba Isige also abolished a lot of traditions, but one of the prominent ones was killing of the king's mother. Oba Isige was the 16th Oba of Benin, and prior to that, if they want to make an Oba king or crown him king, they have to kill the mother because the mom will not be alive to watch the son succeed the throne. So when it was time for him to be made Oba, he said he was not going to kill his mom. To the extent that he gave her a title, Ioba. When you get to five junction, you see one big sculpture, the one statue there. This Oba used it to honor his mother. So he was the one that brought about that title, Ioba. Come back here. His mother is the person in that family. No, no, no. He's the mother of this present Oba. He used that one to also honor his mom. So he was the one that put a stop to that tradition of killing the, the king's mother, yes. And the mother of Oba Esige the Great is Queen Idia. And Queen Idia, she was the motivator. In, in, sh in short, she was the one that even made him to win that war because she was in the vanguard fighting for her son during that war. She killed a lot of enemies. You so, um, Queen Idia of Idia College. Yeah, they use it to honor her. So it has also been in history that Queen Idia is the only queen mother that had ever gone to war. So this one, we call this one Akayon. Akayon is the king's jester. So he's always there at the palace to make the king happy 
by telling him jokes and there's no dull moments with Akayo. You can snap that and you have yes. a little story. So this one, we we'll call it the hairdo. This is how they make hair in the olden, the ancient times. This is how they make hair. They weave it naturally and the maidens and the women come out beautiful. So these are some of the occupations then. You have farming, farmer tapping and hunting. So this one, this, you see this person prostrating, greeting the Oba. It normally happens during Igwe festival every December when the king honors some prominent indigents with chieftaincy titles. So when the person dances around the kingdom, it ends it at the palace by kneeling down in form of courtesy to greet the Oba. Yeah, we call this one the Palazzo Gorilla. In ancient times, for you to be acknowledged as a great hunter, you must be able to kill a gorilla. If you are able to succeed in doing that, you take it to your village head or your community head. They might even, they will even give you a title for doing that. Then this one, we call it the rickshaw. So during the 18th century, this was what was invoked. This is the mode of transportation. And it was owned by the nobles. The wealthy people. This is a real rickshaw. Yes, a real rickshaw. It's a real rickshaw. So you can see an illustration there of how it's being used. So we have a little story about it there. It was until the early 19th century before it now went into extinction. Wow. So this one is over 100 years old. Yes, so you can see how old it is. So we are here to repair it. They use this box. Mm -hmm. They the, especially the oldest son use it to bury the father. Called Isoto. Yes, Isoto. Yes. So they bury their aged dad. Maybe the person must be up to 19 years. That was how they were doing it before. I don't know now. And the person will have up to five generations the children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, great great grandchildren, and so must be up to five generations to perform it for the parents. But due to Christianity, some children don't perform isotone for their parents. But if someone is a chief, especially all these palace chiefs, the children must do this isotone. Yeah. No yes, and the burial normally is for like 14 days. Yes. Then this one, this is how they used to take tobacco in the ancient times. Use, they put it there. The, the old man will now use that pipe to suck it in, uh, which we call the shisha nowadays. But <laughs> Maybe it's just relaxing now, that's why. Uh -huh, yes. So this sculpture we are seeing here is... And that's towards the ending of the... Of the yes, you get to that place. So this sculpture, you see it in most European museums, even yes, African sir. museums. Yes, this is the head of Queen Idia. The Queen Idia I talked about, that's the mother of Oba Isidu the Great in here. So all these heads you are seeing on her head, it was believed that during that war she fought for her son with the Ida people. Each time she killed an enemy, she cut off their head and she would stick it to she stick it to hers. So that's why we have many heads on her head the musket guns so these are replicas of the musket guns that Obai Sige used in fighting of the Ida people and this is a real musket gun yes so so you can see a little more, story more, about more, it there <laughs> then this bicycle you see here it was used by sir professor Victor Waifu when he was 12 years old and wow. he was always riding it to Abudu to go and visit his father from the from the from the Yes, so. Do I that? one, yes, as if you are going to. Are you serious? So this is a black and white picture of him when he was 12 years playing the guitar. You know he's famous for his guitar usage. So as at 12, he was already good with the guitar. And this one was in 2006. It was taken in 2006. This is how many years apart now? He passed on 2021. Then 
we're having some of these awards here, but we lost them due to erosion that entered the place. That's why we're under renovation. This one is one of the honors it was given by Shebu Shagari, member of the Order of the Niger. Yeah, this is in plain guitar and all that. Then these are some of the famous uh, Benin greetings. You know, in Benin, every family have their own greetings. Mm -hmm. Heads of state. Is this in yes, that's what we call him. Inside this room, what do no, just here. <laughs> then this place, we call it our slave market. So they are trying to tell us what brought about the slave trade and all that. It was really sugar. You know, then the whites, they were producing chocolate, they were producing coffee. So they needed a sweetener for those things and you get sugar from sugarcane. So when they started cultivating sugarcane, then there was no mechanized farming. Now you know you have to till the soil. Those white people, they don't really have that strength. So what they did, they came to Africa, especially West Africa. They said kidnapping people from their farmlands. Before they know what is happening, they must have shipped them there to be working in their sugarcane plantations. But later they also started working in their cotton plantations as well. So this is how they guard them, they chain them, strip them naked before taking them there. So this one is just showing us the typical slave market where the, the rich uh, European people, they come there. Some buy the father, some buy the mother and the children. So that's how families were separated for life. And you can see that um, the American now, they, some of them, they identify themselves as African Americans because their forefathers were taken as slaves. Mm -hmm. I think most of us have watched movies now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's how it began. This place the execution ground. We call this place the execution ground. In the year 1986 to 1987, there were a group of armed robbers terrorizing Edo State. So this one in the far right there, that's Lawrence Anini, their leader. And the one at the middle is his friend, Mode Osugo. The one at the far left, that's DSP Yami, the police officer that was giving them information and also giving them ammunition to go and rob. So in the year 1987, they were caught. And during that time, if a criminal is being caught, tried, and they found out that the person is guilty, they sentence them to the firing squad. You can see the soldiers there. They shoot them until but they break down. The, the no, it was in the room here. Where did it happen? The shooting. The shooting. They normally shoot them in the stadium. Yes, almost the one. Yes. So these uh, soldiers will shoot them until they break their last break. They now take them to government cemetery and bury them in mass graves. So this Lawrence Anini, he was the expert driver, he was very good in driving. And the one at the middle there, that's the trigger happy one, the one that was always killing people anyhow. The DSP, you give them information, tell them the police are coming this way, then they will follow the other way to escape. So when they caught one of them, they now implicated him. That was how they were killed. So we have it in the museum here because it's a popular story for Banini. Personalities on the wall here, Bill Clinton, Donald Duke, eh, Oshodin, this Hariri, this eh, Daosa. Mm -hmm. Then this is a famous footballer, Kanu Wanko. This is to be the PDP chairman there, Dan yeah. Obi. So, these are Palazzo aircraft. One is all outside. Okay. So from here, we have two other places to visit: the Mummy Water Place and the City of Blood. The Mummy Water Place, as in the story really happened, that was when Prof was at the Abatek. He normally goes to the Bad Beach to go and unwind. He plays the town and he will be there for like some time before he now retire back. So that very day, he didn't know that time had gone, he was still playing the guitar. 
So he saw a huge wave from afar, on seeing that wave, and the king had two bright lights inside. So he was now still playing his guitar, and he found out that the wave was coming towards where he was. Then later, he saw that the proximity of the wave to where he was seated was just very close. So he stood up, about to run. Then he heard a voice that said, Guitar boy, when you see mommy water, don't run away. So he was still in shock, but he continued playing the strings of the guitar. He felt that maybe it was the melodious uh, tunes that the mermaid heard that brought her from the ocean. So after a while, she now swam back into the ocean and left. So that's because of that incident, he was still in shock. He came back to the name. He couldn't really tell anybody what he saw. He decided to put it in a song, which is the story behind that guitar boy. And that song became a hit. The thing really blessed him. Sure, that was really the source of his wealth. Yes. Then the uh, city of blood. They're just trying to tell us what used to happen in ancient Benin. When there's too much of rain, they sacrifice the woman. When there's too much of sun, that is, we have like drought, no rain for them to farm. They sacrifice a man. They just put him in the sun. Then he died and get dried up. So, and also, it was believed that then, if a man and a woman commit adultery, the man must have initiated it, maybe by giving the woman gifts, or enticing her with money, or carries, all those things. So, he will be the one to pay the ultimate price. He will, he will be the one to be killed. And also, if a person commits treason against his people, betraying his people, that person will be hanged. If they, they will be, the king might even tell him to go and hang himself. If he doesn't hang himself, they will send people to kill him. And all these things, we have chief executioner. That is his job, to carry out the executions. So, but we thank God for Christianity. Those things no longer happen. Just trying to tell us what is to happen. Mm -hmm. Can we go? Can we go yes. And yeah, this one is a typical setting of native doctor. You see them converting the gods with their bottle of pot and all that. Then in Benin, we call this ukure. It's given to the oldest in the family, the leader in the family. Every family has their alkaid bear in Benin. Okay. So this one is a a your masquerade. There's a, yes, there's a festival in Lagos, a your festival, but this is how the masquerade, this is how they dress. So they say that Lagos water from the moon, is that correct? Hey, that one, if we start saying it today, we will not live here. We'll come back and write <laughs> So this one, this is Osogan, the mysterious monster. It was a monster that was coming out of Ikoba River. I don't I believe people must have passed there. There's yeah. a place we call Toba River. So it was coming out from there to kill the women that were going to buy things at Abado Market. So then the kingdom of Benin was called Igodomigodo. And the ruler was Evian. Evian was the ruler then. He had a son, Ogyame. So it was Ogyame that was able to kill this monster. He put a spear inside the fire for like days and he used it to pierce. The stomach of uh, Osoga. That's how he was able to defeat the monster. So, you so hear Charlie Poppy talking yes. of Ibiya. Yes. Ibiya is a very big family. So, this one, they are even royal family, but they didn't allow them to rule because the dad was not really royalty, you understand? So, he was standing in for someone. So, that's why in Benin, the lineage for ruling it must be a royal blood so that's why they didn't allow their family you can hear of the family they are always contesting with the royal families then this one this is the popular joromi joromi was a popular wrestler then so he and his sister they were orphans so the mo the they it was their grandmom that brought them up so she gave them his 10 money never to climb the palm tree at the back of the house so that day she was not around. You know, people can be curious. He now climbed the palm tree. On getting to the top, the thing was just growing, growing, to the extent that Jeremy found himself in the afterward 
up there. So on reaching there, he found out there was a wrestling contest. Being a good wrestler, he saw a monster with two heads approaching him. So then he now heard the voice of his sister. He said, Jo Romeo, oh me, Jo. So the thing gave him strength. So that's how Jeremy was able to defeat that monster with two heads. He cut off one of the heads of the monster and threw him to the earth and said, go back to the earth. At the earth, he used just one head. So angered by that incident, a monster with seven heads now approached Jeremy again to fight him. So this time around, that monster really beat him very well. He was now even feeling unconscious and dizzy. So he heard the voice of his sister again. This time it said, he see. He see, so the thing also gave him strength. He was now agile like a tiger. So he used his bare hands to tear the stomach of that monster with seven heads. That's how he was able to defeat. Being that he was tired, he now decided to retreat, trying to come back to the earth. So another monster with another seven heads now said, ah, Jeremy will not go like that for defeating or killing two of their persons. So while he was trying to get hold of Jeremy. Jeremy now heard the voice of his sister this time around. It was just like a warning. He now said, And he actually heed to the advice of his sister. He was not trying to climb down the way he went up before. So that monster was also trying to grab him. Couldn't get hold of him properly. But he was just able to touch his back. That's why we have that backbone there. So that's the story behind it. <laughs> so here, we we'll call this place our Oba Palace. So when you come to the palace, we say Oba Atok Beye. We say. So when Sir Professor Victor Wife for built this museum, it was Oba Eredawa that was on the throne. That's the father of our present Oba. And then the governor was Adams Oshomole. So Oshomole came to the palace to pay homage to the Oba. That's why we have these sculptures here. And each time you get to the palace, you see a young man dressed this way with this khaki like this. We call them the Omada. They are holding the staff of office of the Oba, just the way you see them holding the mace in the house in here. So this is the staff of office. But each time you get to the palace, you see them like this. Is that if the Oba is walking, you see him in front of the Oba, or if he's sitting down, you see the Omada by the side. Then he also used this sculpture of the Oba Redawa to honor him. So that's oh, just. He <laughs> <laughs> just kept it there. When it was working, maybe like children come for excursion, yeah. we now put one of props and this thing, they will just watch a bit before we proceed. Mm -hmm. So this was taken by a white man showing how Benin looked like in the night then. So you see, they built something like a tower here. They will now put lights on top, like street lights, for no, it to be shined. Show where exactly the this was. See now, see there, it was a white man that took it. I don't know, 17th century. Even my forefathers were not born there. So we just have it here. So this place. So these are some of the clothes that Prof used for his uh, shows when he's, you know, he likes flashy clothes. So after the renovation, the wife promised to add more to the museum then. So I should add more to it. So this one, this was this was his first guitar, but we lost it to erosion. He was the one that also invented this one. In fact, this was the guitar he played for the Queen of England that made her give him the title Sir. You can see there's a Sir in front of his name. So it was a title given to him so by... So it was not from the Catholic Church? No, no, no. It was given to him by the Queen of England when he played this particular guitar for her. He also invented this one. You will see this one. It was in that picture of his 30 years on stage. One side is a keyboard. One side is... And he plays this one very well. Yes. You see it in that... Uh, it was what he played during that his 30 years on stage. So some of these pictures you see here, just trying to remind us of the invasion of Benin, 1897, during the time of Oba Uburame, when Oba Uburame was on the throne. So it was this particular captain, Captain Robert Phillips, that initiated that war. 
Normally in Benin, every December, the Oba observe what we call Igwe Festival. And during that festival, he does not entertain visitors. So he got the information that Captain Phillips and his entourage they were approaching Benin. So he sent some people to go and meet them that they should hold on or they should go back. When he's done with the festival, they can come and see him. But he refused. He was adamant. He was still approaching. So the next thing he did was he sent some of his warriors to go and stop them. On getting there, the white people that were coming, there were nine in number. On getting there, there was an altercation between them. One team led to the other and fight broke out. So seven of the white men, they were killed. So the remaining two now went back to England to tell them that the Benin people, they are barbaric, they are wicked and all that, that they just killed those people for no just cause. So what they now did, they sent their mercenaries, their sophisticated weapons to come and invade Benin. That's what led to the invasion? Yes. So, and this man here, this is warrior Asoro. He was known for his bravery during that war. And the point at which he stood was at Sakmomba Junction. I believe you know Sakmomba Junction, close to the palace. So that place was called Sokmomba. I think we are the ones that corrupted it to Sakmomba. What it means was only the Oba. That is only the Oba that has the right to pass through that road. Any white man that passes through that road, he killed the white man. So he was able to kill a lot of their soldiers before they were able to overpower him. You can see what he was using to fight and they came with sophisticated weapons. So this is a Oba of Rame. After the invasion, they were now trying him. This is Captain Shaw. They were asking him questions that, why did they kill those seven white men at the beginning? So he said he never gave the order for the white men to be killed. I think it was a misunderstanding that led to that. But already, they had the intention of killing him. But the Queen of England kicked against it. So what they now did, they dethroned him. They removed him from the throne and they put his best friend, his ally, that is Chief Obaseki, to be on the throne, to be holding the throne for Nencha. So they now sent him on exile. You can see that thing. That no, was what there's they There's a prison in Ringo that they said that's where they kept him. Who? There's one prison in Ringo that they said the other was kept there before he was exiled to Calabar. Okay. My boss didn't tell me about that. So that's the chain they used in conveying him to Calabar. He went there with two of his wives and some of his trusted allies. They accompanied him. And during that time, they stole about 2,500 artifacts. You can see that Benin artifacts is scattered all over European museums. They keep on promising to bring them, which they are bringing bit by bit. They are yet to really bring the chunk of it much of what they stole. You can see this cannon here. This was one of the sophisticated weapons mm -hmm. they're using, destroying Benin. So he was an exile in Calabar for 17 years. He now died in 1914. So his oldest son, which is Prince Agwabasini, was now crowned king, and he gave himself the title Oba Eweka II. So let's go again. This is the mermaid, and this is Komina. This is Prof playing his guitar. Then before all this, we have a plate here, and we have all these coins here. So each time they come, maybe when you we come back trying to take them, you see them, they are stealing the coin and that was how they even stole the plate. So this one is ancient Benin walls. So this was how he was lying down playing when the man Yes, was he was playing the guitar there. We have this thing here, it looks like you know that camp bed yes. in here. You know we have these things in the beach now. Yes. In here. So it was just playing that when she came out. So this one, we are going to the city of blood. City of blood. Yes, then, you know, they were doing a lot of sacrifices then. Okay, like I said earlier, if there's too much of rain to sacrifice a woman, if there's too much of sun, when there's drought, they sacrifice a man, they hang him to the sun like that. Then this one, you can see that he committed adultery. He was even ganged. Maybe he was like struggling with them or something. So that's how he was before he was executed. This one is even a chief and his attire. He committed treason. That's why he was hanged. 
and this is the chief executioner. This is the Would guard any, working for him. You can see how they. We have now. We have it in our history book there. So and where all these things are happening, they have vultures. You know they feed on dead things. You can see the carcass, sea skulls, littering everywhere. So that's what used to happen in ancient Yemen. Thank God. Yeah, houses with this traditional setting. Yes. Even the palace had this. The palace yes. walls were like this. So like it was that. when he came, you see that he modernized the new Oba. Oba the wall is the second. Inside the outside, you're seeing. Uh -huh. No, but from the outside, you know that place that is at Airport Road, all yeah. those, it was they, like this before. Yeah, they built that one at Airport Road at the back of the old one. The old one is still inside. So, Prof and his voice. They used this uh, studio for rehearsals before going for a show. Then the actual studio. Yes, they used this place for oh. rehearsals before going. They want to make any kind of recording. It's been done there. So these ones are like all the secondary students or primary so that don't know what. Are working. Is. Yes, this one is gramophone. Yes, that's what they were using in ancient times. That's why it's a museum now. This one is called telephone. We show it to those younger ones. Yeah. And they will have this, uh, like holding this fan. Maybe they use it to fan the nobles or the wealthy ones. And the person will not even say that he's tired. We just see the using it. So, so this was a fan? Yes. Yeah. We are used by royalties then. Yeah. It's yeah. actually working. It is. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well. Yeah, this exits. So that wraps up today's episode. I guess you had a nice time in the Palazzo Museum. Thanks to our guide for taking out time to explain everything in the museum to us. There are a lot of episodes on Benin City on this channel, so feel free to check through and share your thoughts whenever you watch a video. I always read the comments and I would want to hear from you. This was a bit lengthy and I just hope a lot of us were able to finish it so if you watched to this point you can also let me know and if there's any other place in Benin City you would like to see that is of historical importance you can let us know and we'll schedule time to visit such places so that will be all for now see you on the next project have a nice time